Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm reviewing the Deadpool movie. Now this is a movie that people have been trying to get made for something like 15 years. And it finally happened and man, minus little yellow narration boxes, this is basically everything that we could have hoped for in a Deadpool movie in my book. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep this pretty spoiler free. I am going to talk about one, a few minor details here and there, but basically nothing you probably haven't picked up on from the trailers or probably heard about. So, uh, and, if it, and if I do come to anything that I would consider seriously important, I'll, I'll kind of give you a heads up first. So let's just get right into it. And um, there were some people who were saying like, well, why are they making this an R-rated movie? You know, they can't, why not make it PG-13 so kids can go to it? Because there are a lot of young fans out there uh, of Deadpool. And, you know, that's all well and good. But, you know, that's not really who the, this movie is being made for. This is being made for the people who are really not very familiar with Deadpool and the chance to really sh basically introduce this character to the world as a whole. And... Deadpool is one of those characters, uh, not unlike the Punisher, who you can do and tell good stories with in that sort of PG-13, TV-14 playground that the Marvel Universe and the comics in general seems to operate on. But, not, again, unlike the Punisher, Deadpool is one of those characters where if you take those restraints off and let it go to the R rating, Sort of like uh, in the Punisher Max comics, for example, which I love. I love those comics. Uh, then the character just truly shines. Um, now, this is Deadpool is actually a lot, very sim in a lot of ways, very similar to the, the way he was portrayed in that video game, uh, the Deadpool video game from a few years back. Again, certainly um, a little bit more crude than uh, we found in the comics, but still nowhere near as crazy as it gets here. But yeah, this movie, I mean, this movie just would not have worked if they'd edited it for a PG-13. I mean, it revels in the violence, it revels in the crudeness of it all, and that's part of what makes it work. Because, you know, if Deadpool, realistically, if they didn't have the sort of censorship constraints of the regular Marvel Universe, like, yeah, he would, of course, be a person who probably would swear a lot. And uh, it has been more than a few times implied that Deadpool gets up to some really, really messed up stuff um, off camera. So, yeah, here they're just able to completely take the restraints off, let Deadpool run nuts, because, and that, has, that's, that works for him because he's basically a hyper violent Looney Tune. Like, I mean, he's been compared to Bugs Bunny more than once, and it's a fitting apt. It's a fitting app. Apt comparison. God. <sighs> so, I mean, some of the stuff that comes out of uh, Ryan Reynolds and uh, T.J. Miller, I think, is the guy that plays Weasel, and all these other characters. I mean, it is some of the <laughs> it is some some pretty rude stuff, but it is hilarious. I went. I mean, the theater I was in was pretty packed, and people were cracking up left and right. I mean, even the opening credits are hilarious. Uh, and the uh, bonus scene at the end, oh, surprise, surprise, like you didn't know there was going to be one, is this big nod to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I mean, that's great. And if you even read the, the, the credits carefully, there's uh, a few jokes hidden in the credits. Uh, <laughs> they gave, um, and, like, the, the one I saw was, um, thanks to Fabian Ninchizieza and Rob Liefeld, with tongue in the credits. That <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, so, yeah. The, um, the, the humor in this movie is absolutely hilarious. The violence is delightfully over the top. And, I mean, crazy humor, ridiculous violence. It's, I mean, it is Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds was tailor-made like to play this character and oh my god he just knocks it out of the park every single second whether he's doing the funny stuff or whether he's actually doing the more serious stuff the more the, the pathos side of Deadpool and make no mistake um, that 
that that is a side that does occasionally come up. I mean, uh, Deadpool is a seriously messed up guy, and um, he didn't get that way through, um, you know, happy events. Um, which actually kind of brings me to one of the other criticisms I've had people level, kind of level at the movie, and that's that um, the character of Vanessa, played by Morena Bacharan, uh, best, of course, you know, a lot of people know her as Inara from Firefly, she's Leslie Tompkins on Gotham, and she's uh, got a pretty impressive superhero resume of her own. Now, here, I mean, Copycat has a very complicated history in the comics, and here it's a much more simpler take that she's basically this prostitute that Wade falls in love with and she falls in love with him then they find out he gets he finds out that he's dying from cancer and things get even worse from there and this actually reminds me of a lot of one of my favorite Deadpool stories and this um, comes from an event that Marvel did you know back in the latter part of the 90s called flashback and it was basically uh, one month where they put out a special issue of each comic that took place before their first, the character's first appearance or the first issue of their series and just sort of told you a previously unknown story about their past. And the, the Deadpool flashback really kind of actually focused in a lot on Vanessa when she and Wade were still together. And she was portrayed as really a pretty nice person. Now, once after she after she gained her powers and became copycat, that's not so much at certain times. Um, I'm not super familiar with her uh, as a character, so I can't say too much. I'm just going on, on what I do know about the character. But, um, yeah, that was um, one of the things in that is, is the, the immediate fallout when he breaks it to her that, like, yeah, I, I have cancer I'm, and I'm going to die, and when he leaves to go off and become a part of the Weapon X program and gain his powers. And, I mean, it was just a really, really sad story. Um, oddly enough, Stan Lee was actually uh, narrating these flashbacks. Like, you know, I guess he, they brought him in to sort of write his own little dialogue for that part. And he summed it up really nicely at the end that the world lost the light of Wade and Vanessa's love. Now that's what happened in the comics. Here in the movie things work out a little bit better for them. Uh, it certainly works out better for uh, Wade, where, while it depends on the artist just how messed up his face is, here in the movie, he doesn't look that great, but uh, it's just... it's something that sort of seems like a guy with like a really bad skin condition. In the comics, he's portrayed as a much more... it's portrayed in a much more messed up way. But again, it does tend to vary from artist to artist. Um, speaking of stuff that's a little bit different uh, from the comics, uh, the character of Ajax, um, well here he's uh, turned into, as the opening critics say, the you know, token evil British bad guy. Uh, I believe in the comics he was supposed to be American or possibly Canadian. The stuff with like Weapon X and all that is a little fuzzy at times. And um, yeah, there it was really actually, he was like, wore the suit of armor and he was like really, really fast is how I remember it. And Wade's, um, you know, going out there to kill him was a little bit more of a spiritual journey of, like, you know, what kind of person am I going to be? Am I going to be a killer, or am I going to go out there and try and be a better person? Here it's just a much more straight revenge thing, which, when they have their final confrontation, does have a, a, a rather nice twist to it. But, um, yeah, they do a nice job of making you really want to understand why... Wade wants payback on this guy and making him seem like well, a villain that you really want the hero to take down. Um, nothing particular to say about uh, Angel Dust. That's the name of uh, the woman who's sort of uh, Ajax's right hand. She's played by some MMA fighter that I've never heard of. And is apparently uh, like a really minor character in the comics. I don't know anything about her, so I don't really have anything particular to say there. Uh, one character who was a significant departure from the comics was Weasel, where he's more of like Deadpool's arms dealer and tech support guy. Here he's just sort of played as a, portrayed as the bartender and I suppose the owner of um, this ex-girl school that serves as a um, hangout and bar for other mercenaries, and where you know Wade goes and sometimes picks up work. This is based on the Hell House from Joe Kelly's run in the comics. 
and it is that it was just exactly that. It was a former girls school that got taken over by these mercenaries as sort of their um, hangout slash clearing house for mercenary work. And um, I guess sort of had Weasel stepping in for the character Patch, who kind of ran the show there. But okay, okay. Uh, I, that's something I can live with. Uh, I was a little disappointed that they didn't do more with the character of Blind Alfred. She's quite important, particularly during uh, the Joe Kelly run of the comics. Which, are, which, are, which is my favorite run of Deadpool. Um, here, she's a much more minor character. Um, again, disappointing, because I remember really liking Blind Alfred back in the day. But, you know, there's, there's only so much room in, in this movie. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it is pretty cool that they did have... Uh, they were able to get Colossus to come in as, as a character, even though he's done entirely by CG. And then they also have him sort of serving as the mentor to this character uh, called Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who is this really minor character in the comics. And um, her powers actually seem a lot more like Cannonball from X-Force from what I read was actually intended to be that character but I guess um, they couldn't quite get the rights to him or something like that um, exactly what they can do with the X-Men universe in this movie is a little fuzzy but they were able to get these two and what I really like that they do with Colossus here is sort of set him up as Colossus is very much like the traditional a traditional superhero you know he's going out there and he wants to do all do right because it's the right thing to do and he makes these speeches about you know morality and what you know makes a good hero and all this other stuff and that led to that really fantastic and this is one of the reasons why one of the things that did disappoint me about this movie is that w in one of the trailers it was the red band trailer where um you know they come across deadpool after he's kind of killed all these dudes on a bridge and um colossus is getting on deadpool's case and Deadpool says to him, I don't have time for your X-Men bullshit, Colossus. And don't get me wrong. I, I, okay, I, I love X-Men. Hey, look, it's Colossus. There he is. And incidentally, this is, this whole thing here, this is, this is a really good story. Um, but yeah, as much as I love the X-Men, I, I do just love the idea that somebody went and said to the like one of them was like, God, so much with you stuff with you guys is just bullshit, because uh, the X Men do tend to be comics do tend to be pretty high on the angst and can be at times be ridiculously convoluted. Um, you know, again, X Men is really kind of the the '90s X Men and Spider Man cartoons, particularly the X Men cartoon itself, is what got me into comics when I was young. So, again, I love X-Men, but it is one of those things that, to put it bluntly, can really be up its own ass sometimes. And just hearing a character do say that to one of the X-Men, just it, it's almost like a catharsis in a way. Because it's just like, man, I love you guys, but damn, sometimes you are just... <laughs> these comics really are full of bullshit. <clears throat> But again, that's a nice way of highlighting it. You know, Colossus, again, a very traditional superhero, while Deadpool is basically the guy who's going around swearing and killing people and saying, like, oh, man, all this stuff is just bullshit. Um, now, again, ne I didn't really have that much to say about Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Uh, she's not a character I know particularly well, and again, she's a very minor character in the comics. Uh, I do like sort of this one bit where she um, starts laughing, like Wade makes some kind of pop culture joke, and she just goes, God, you're old. Totally oblivious to the fact that she has taken her name, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, from a song by Monster Magnet from 1995. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you consider stuff from the 90s or whatever to be, or to be old, but you're perfectly content with taking your name from a song from... 20 years ago. But uh, in, in all fairness, this is actually a pretty cool take on the character. The, uh, they did, since she's such a minor character, really have a free hand to sort of do what they wanted with her. And um, even though Negasonic is not super fleshed out, she very quickly becomes a likable character. And it is certainly funny to sort of see her, um, like, 
like we saw in the trailer, tweeting during a fight and just sort of looking like horribly annoyed and put off by all this. Again, somebody who's very much uh, probably agrees with uh, Wade's interpretation of just how much the X-Men are full of bullshit. And then there's actually this one moment where she laughs, and it's actually pretty, pretty awesome. And, um, yeah, there are also some other things in there that really sort of highlight um, how Deadpool is not the traditional superhero and that Colossus is. And, well, let's just pay. This is Deadpool's movie. This is a movie that runs on Deadpool's rules. So um, things don't always go so well for Colossus. And that's hilarious. And it, in a way, it's kind of funny. For a long time, Colossus was actually one of the X-Men that I liked the least. It wasn't until um, Joss Whedon's run where um, there's this moment where um, Colossus is fighting some guys and he just says, I am made of rage. And that has this moment in my head that just crystallized Colossus as a character for me. And I remember thinking, like, I get Colossus now. Colossus is awesome. I want more Colossus. So... It's kind of a little bit of funny to, to see, go f for me to go from somebody who kind of really had a disdain for Colossus to some to really liking him quite a lot, and in here seeing him being the guy who basically is sort of the symbol for all that is bullshit in X Men comics, and yet still portrayed in a way that's generally f positive. Colossus is, at the end of the day, a good guy trying his best to do good. And he does succeed on more than a little bit. He's just, um, he's just basically in the wrong effing movie. Let's put it that way. So, uh, I think I'm probably just going to wrap that up here. So, at the end of the day, yeah, there are some things in this movie that are flaws, and there are some things that, I, I understand why some people might not like them. Uh, the violence, the crudity... The, the nudity. Hey, remember, um, yeah, dicks in superhero movies. Watchmen did it first. Just remember that. Uh, but this is still a really good movie. This is a movie that takes everything that we as comic fans love about Deadpool and just absolutely unchains it, puts it all in the hands of Ryan Reynolds and the other people of the movie, and just lets them go whole hog on it. Oh, yeah, uh, and it was cool when we um, met Bob, agent of Totally Not Hydra. That was awesome. Oh, that was a tiny spoiler. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, this movie is basically takes all the stuff that's great about Deadpool and turns it loose, turns it up to 11, and it is so damn much fun. Uh, this is one of those rare movies where I feel like, Man, I want to go back to the theater tomorrow and see this movie again. That's how much I enjoyed it. And oh, from the little stinger at the end, Deadpool 2, basically been given a go. Well, they didn't have that in the trailer, but in the movie, but yeah, word is it's been given a go. And they promise us cable in Deadpool 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be good. So, with that said, folks, I'm going to call it here. Uh, as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. Until next time, uh, take care and have a good one.